The hydrophobic effect is the driving force in which we take amphipathic molecules and cluster the polar segments together and the non-polar segments together. Once again, amphipathic molecules are molecules in which there are both non-polar and polar regions. And in the hydrophobic effect, we're going to cluster the non-polar segments together and the polar segments together. So how do we do that? Let's say, for example, we have a glass of water. We know water is a polar molecule, so it will interact with polar molecules. Now let's say we add some phospholipids into this glass of water. We know that the phosphate head group, it is hydrophilic and polar and it will interact with the water and be happy. But this hydrocarbon tail, it is hydrophobic and it does not want to interact with the water. So what's gonna happen is that to minimize the interactions it has with water, these water molecules inside this glass of water are going to form a cage around the hydrophobic region. Now this cage allows less interaction with water, but the downside is that this requires a lot of energy because before water was highly disordered. It was just randomly uh, dispersed throughout this glass, but now this water is highly ordered around the hydrophobic region of the phospholipid. So we know that randomness is associated with entropy. So if there's less randomness, your entropy will decrease, but your energy will increase because maintaining order requires energy. Disorder does not require energy. So once we get these cages around, the good part is that the hydrophobic tail does not have to interact with so much water. But the downside is, is the amount of energy being used to individually encase each of these phospholipids. Now the question is, what if there was an alternative way where we could minimize uh, these cages? And that is where the hydrophobic effect comes in. The hydrophobic effect, what'll happen is that these phospho, uh, these uh, hydrocarbon tails, they will cluster together in the center. So only the, the phosphate head will be in the surrounding and it will associate with the water and we won't need that much energy. So here we can see the example. So we see this phospholipid um, being added into water and we see these individual cases of water around each of the hydrophobic regions. Now this uh, increases the orderness, so your randomness is decreasing, so your entropy is decreasing. And this is requiring a lot of energy because we're trying to maintain order. But what if we cluster them together, these three, uh, these three phospholipids, if we cluster them together, we require less water molecules because we've grouped them together. If we require less water molecules, that means there's less order needed because we've reduced the number of water molecules that were ordered originally. So our entropy will increase. We get a little bit more randomness because we need less water to keep these uh, hydrophobic tails encased. Now, what if we take it a step further which is the hydrophobic effect, in which we group all of these hydrophobic tails in the center. And we, and all the hydrophilic head groups are on the outside. So essentially we form a ball, and on the outside of that ball we see the hydrophilic head groups, and on the inside we have all the hydrophobic tails that are no longer interacting with that water. So now we no longer need that ordered cage all around to prevent the hydrophobic tails from interacting with too much water. So now there's more randomness and less order, so our entropy has increased. So we went from a decrease in entropy, because this is less randomness, 
Then we got a little bit more randomness, and then we got a lot more randomness. So our entropy is increasing, and our energy is decreasing. Because remember, it requires more energy for order. So over here, this required the most energy, and over here, this requires the least amount of energy. And we know that it is thermodynamically and energetically more favorable uh, to move towards less energy utilization. Therefore, the high entropy is what maximizes, it's, the, it's, it's maximizing the energetic favorability. And that is the hydrophobic effect. It's just clustering the, the non-polar region together and clustering the, hydro, uh, the polar region, hydrophilic region together. So taking a look at a quick example of the hydrophobic effect in real life, we can think about washing our hands. So let's say we have grease on our hands. We have some oil on our hands and we want to wash it away. If we wash our hands with only water, that soap and grease on our hands will not wash away because oil is not water soluble. Oil is hydrophobic. So what we do to get rid of that oil is we apply soap on our hands. But what is soap? Soap is amphipathic. That means soap has a polar region and it has a nonpolar region. So what happens is that when we wash our hands, the soap it forms those knee cells. So it forms that ball of hydrophilic heads on the outside and the hydrophobic tails on the inside, and it encaps encapsulates that oil right on the inside. So it forms those knee cells. So over here we've got the hydrophilic, and on the inside we have the hydrophobic molecules. So it forms those me cells because of the hydrophobic effect and it encapsulates that oil inside because the oil is hydrophobic and it interacts with those hydrophobic tails. And that is why that oil is able to wash away from our hands. So soap is used to wash away hydrophobic molecules on our hands that would not wash away from only water because water is hydrophilic and it cannot wash away those hydrophobic compounds on our hands. So these knee cells are very important in washing our hands, and they will also be important when we talk about uh, lipid transportation in our body.